An international team of geologists has investigated the potential early warning signs of such a world-shaking eruption, focusing on the volcano. This volcano has produced two of the most massive eruptions the Earth has ever seen, occurring 840,000 years ago and 75,000 years ago. Even if humanity manages not to self-destruct with war or climate change, there are still other existential threats we must be ready for. Earth came preloaded with plenty of dangers long before we began piling on, some of which our species has still barely experienced. Two researchers point out in a new commentary in the journal Nature, we shouldn't let asteroid anxiety overshadow another colossal danger lurking under our noses, volcanoes. Over the next century, large-scale volcanic eruptions are hundreds of times more likely to occur than our asteroid and common impacts, put together, write Michael Cassidy, a professor of volcanology at the University of Birmingham, and Lara Mani, a research associate at the Center for the Study of Existential Risk at the University of Cambridge. While preparing for asteroids is prudent, we're doing too little about the likelier event of a volcanic supereruption, Cassidy and Mani argue. This needs to change. Volcanoes may be less exotic than fireballs from space, but that's all the more reason to respect them. Volcanoes, unlike asteroids, are already here on Earth. They're scattered all over the planet, often blanketed with picturesque scenery that belies their destructive potential. And while humans have seen lots of terrible eruptions in modern times, most pale in comparison to the supervolcanoes that erupt every 15,000 years or so. The last supereruption of this kind happened about 22,000 years ago according to the U.S. Geological Survey. A supereruption is one with a magnitude of 8, the highest rating on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. The most recent magnitude 7 eruption occurred in 1815 at Mount Tambora, Indonesia, killing an estimated 100,000 people. The ash and smoke reduced global temperatures by about 1 degree Celsius on average, causing the year without a summer in 1816. There were widespread crop failures, leading to famine, disease outbreaks, and violence. Volcano monitoring has improved since 1815, as has our ability to rally global support for disaster relief, but not necessarily enough to offset all the risks we now face. Earth's human population has octupled since the early 1800s, Cassidy and Mani note, and some big urban areas have blossomed near dangerous volcanoes. We're more reliant on global trade, too, so upheaval in one place can spur food shortages and other crises elsewhere. The peril posed by volcanoes may also be greater than we think. The history of many volcanoes remains murky, making it hard to anticipate future eruptions and focus resources where risks are highest. We need more research on ice cores as well as historical and geological records, Cassidy and Monty Wright, including marine and lakes cores, especially in high-risk but data-poor regions like Southeast Asia. We also need more interdisciplinary research to help us predict how a supereruption might cripple civilization, they add, by identifying risks to trade, agriculture, energy, and infrastructure, plus geographic pinch points where volcanic risks overlap with critical trade networks. Community awareness and education is another key to resilience. People need to know if they live in volcanic danger zones, how to prepare for an eruption, and what to do when it happens. Beyond preparatory outreach, authorities also need ways to broadcast public alerts when volcanoes erupt, Cassidy and Monty write, like text messages with details about evacuations, tips for surviving an eruption, or directions to shelters and healthcare facilities. Everything is happening silently underground and the analysis now gives us an idea of what is to come.